Goodo Tutorials is not sponsored by or affiliated with the Goodo Game Engine. I want to go over a quick overview of this episode. First, I'm going to go over what we need to know and have in order to perform this episode's task of adding music and then go straight into live coding examples. This episode will be the last time we look at a coding example. I do not want to go overboard in this episode with adding music, therefore let's keep it simple, one background music and a few sound effects. After this, a few more episodes that go over friendly advice, theory, comments in your code and adding the project to itch.io. And don't forget that you can download the project over at GitHub if you want to see the code instead of watching this episode. Now finally, this is the episode where everything comes together. And for that, we are going to need music and sound effects. Two types of things to consider when adding music and sound effects into your game is, are you making a prototype or are you just practicing with lower level code or practicing in general? If it's the former, then just remember to take into consideration what type of game you want to make when picking out music and sound effects. If it's the latter, which this episode resides around, just let loose and have some fun. Pick something that resonates with you. Up until this point, we focused on the nitty gritty details of coding. Since we are adding the frosting to our game, Cake, when adding music and sound effects, let's just have some fun with the music. I want to mention something really quick. Nothing beats making your own music and sound effects from scratch, but that topic is out of scope for this series. For now, let's just pick a free open source music and sound effects that are royalty free. I'm going to add a link in the description down below for a website called opengameart.org. It's an amazing website, lots of music and sound effects to choose from. You just have to find one that resonates with you and or what you're trying to accomplish with your game. On top of that, I recommend that you check out my Godot Basic series, more specifically episode 54 through 59, as I won't be going over how everything works and interconnects with one another, as I have already explained this in thorough detail. This episode expects basic understanding of the following nodes, audio stream player, animation player, animation, audio file types, and audio buses. Since this is the last episode where I go over code, I want to keep things simple or as simple as I can get with what I taught so far in the Godot Basics series. And for this reason of easing out of coding, I do not want to add audio buses to manage the sound levels of music and sound effects, but you are highly encouraged to do so in your own practice project. Just keep in mind that it is your audio stream player that manages which audio bus the signal goes to, and by default, all audio stream player notes send their signal to the bus named master. Regardless, let me show you what we will be creating. So the music and sound effects we will be adding to our game will be very simple. We will have one main background music that will loop itself for as long as the game plays, and then we will find sound effects for when the ball collides with the paddle or walls, when the player wins or loses a point, and sound effects for when the player wins or loses a round. First, we will work on background music, and once that is done, we will then work on adding sound effects to our games. No matter whether we are creating background music or sound effects, because we are working with audio stream player and animation player, we do need a way to create animations for our animation players, which passes itself into an audio stream player. We will be coding things in the following order. The order of coding will start off with our animation data container, followed by the animation player that will need our animation data container. Then we will create the audio stream player, which will control the playing of our sounds. Lastly, we will need to add the code to the appropriate locations in our game for the sounds to take effect. Now, keep in mind, we will be creating two audio stream players. One audio stream player will handle the background music. The other audio stream player will handle playing our sound effects. Okay, so let's get into the code. So first head over to our main folder. We're gonna go ahead and create a new folder and let's just call it music. Okay, once we've created our music folder, let's start by creating that animation code that we talked about in the slides earlier. To do that, let's head over to new script. We're just going to call it, in this case, let's just call it sound resource and it will inherit from a resource. Press create 
head over to our sound resource. We can delete everything if it shows up. And that's basically it. So first, let's go ahead and give it a name. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and give it the class name sound resource. From there, all we need to do is create one function that basically returns back an animation data container. And for that, we need to create a function that actually takes in a couple parameters because when we create our two different manager classes, one manager for background music and the other manager for sound effects, they will need to use this function. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's basically it. So let me go over what parameters we need in order to create our sound. First, we need the sound file which is a resource, basically an MP3 or WAV file. The next is audio stream node, and all that really is is just our node path. So basically a string that lets us know where our audio stream player is located. Then we need the length because we need to tell the animation how long this music will last for. Is it a minute? Is it half a second? And lastly is loop because it will be shared between the background music and the sound effects manager classes. And by default, it's false because the only thing that needs to set a loop will be our background music, which is just one file. And then the sound effects, we will be needing at least five sound effects. So by default, it's just easier coding wise to leave this default value as false. And lastly, we are returning back an animation data container, which holds our sound and nothing more. Now let's go ahead and create the variables. The most important one will be the animation that we need to return back, which we will call sound. And I'm just going to return back the sound so we can get rid of the error. Perfect. We just created our sound variable, which is just an animation data container, which we need to manually set certain settings in order for everything to work properly. Regardless, all we really need is a track index and a variable for our zero second or second at the zero position, which is just basically the beginning of the file, because we actually have to pick at which point in time in the music or sound file we wish to start playing that sound. Regardless, let me go ahead and create those now. So in this case, we do have a track index, which holds at what track in our player stream we wish to add our file at and what type of track it will be in this case, type audio. So two birds, one stone sound dot add track animation type audio. And that integer value is returned back into a track index so we can pass along. Next, we have a variable called start at zero, which is a float and it holds the value zero, which just means we want to start at the beginning of our sound file, the zero position. And notice how our variable is all uppercase because we would like to treat this as a constant. One thing again to keep in mind is that constants do not work in functions. And normally constants just means we would like to keep a variable immutable or unchangeable. Regardless, if you wanted a constant, you could just put it up here. It will work perfectly. Nothing's really changed. Either or is fine. There is no right answer in this case. However, I want to keep everything together just because I want to keep this episode simple. And therefore, I'm just going to keep this variable here. Regardless, we do need to do a few things. We need to actually set the length of our track, whether or not it is loopable by default. It's false, but because this can be manually set as true, we need to pass and actually set the loop up. And then after we need to set a path and insert the key. So let me go ahead and set the length and loop since they are the easiest. This is pretty straightforward. All we are doing is setting the total length and whether or not it loops and the length is determined by the manager class that has to keep track of that. But to keep it simple, we won't actually be calculating how long the file is. We will just manually hard code the length of the actual file. Regardless, one thing to note is our length does need to be equal to or greater than the length of the sound file in order to play properly. So let me just add some comments here.
From there, we actually need to set the path and then insert the key. First, we actually need to set the path of the track, just as the name implies. And in this case, we are assuming, because this is a node path, right? Audio stream is a node path. We are assuming that our node path actually passes in a node that exists on the scene tree and that this particular node is the node that will actually play, in this case, our sound file. Now, once we've actually set the path, we do need to insert the key. And again, we are just picking the track we wish to pass our sound file to and then set at what position in our sound we wish to play. And in this case, it is zero, which is the beginning. And once we've set all that, we can actually return the sound. Regardless, we have everything and we can finally move on. So next we need to create the actual manager. And in this case, we're gonna go to music file, right click, pick new script. We will call it background manager. And it will be an animation player. Go ahead, press create. Head over to background manager, delete everything if it's there. I actually chose empty, the option empty when you create files. And so it doesn't give you anything, but if you have stuff, you can just delete everything. Keep the extends animation player, of course. Now we do need one thing and we're gonna call it variable sounds and it will be a sound resource. And as a matter of fact, that's all we really need. Now what we need to do is actually find the music we wish to play. So in this case, I'm going to skip ahead to finding the music and actually adding it. You do have several options. You can add another folder to hold all the music files to not mix up the GDScript files and the MP3 or WAV files. In my case, I'm just gonna keep everything inside the music folder. Okay, so over here in the music folder, you can see here background music.wave. Keep in mind, WAV is looseless, which means it will be a very large file. Regardless, double click it and see how many seconds we have. In this case, it's 74.25. And we're gonna create a few extra variables. One is we need to actually get the node path or where we expect the name of our node and the location in the scene tree our node will be at. Then we need to actually get the resource of our background music and the length of that. So we can go ahead and actually create the animation and then play it. So let me go ahead and create those variables now. So again, the background length is 74.25. Our background file is in our music folder called backgroundmusic.wave. And lastly, our node path. We are assuming that our node path will be a child of node2d and called background string. Lastly, let's go ahead and create our ready virtual method, which will add a few things such as the name and actually adding the animation and playing our background music. We have to pass in two arguments. The first is the name of the animation, and then the second is the actual animation data container. In this case, we can call it background music. That would be an appropriate name. However, I don't like typing things in there. So let's go ahead and actually create a variable. In this case, we'll just pass in the variable. And then next, we actually need to get our sounds and the create sound function. It takes in four arguments. And that's basically it. We added the animation and all we need to do is actually play it. And there we go. Now keep in mind that we are assuming that one, we have an audio stream to actually play our animation player and two, that the name of the node is background stream. And so we actually need to go into our game state to create the background stream node. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here we are, game state. And 
for everything. I'm just going to do sound maker just to make sure that everything that deals with the music is at the very top for my sanity. And in this case, background stream, which has to be an audio stream player. Okay, perfect. Now that we actually have our background stream or audio stream player for the background music, we actually need to pass it along our animation player here. And I do not have a class name, so let me go ahead and do that now. I'll just copy and paste that. We can head here. And that's basically it. So now we have our stream, which relies on our manager, and our manager relies on our animation data container or data resource. Regardless, we do need to actually add it onto the scene tree, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So remember our background stream? Well, we need to actually set its name. And then from there, our background stream needs to actually add the child of our background manager. Now we actually need to add that onto our main scene. And so we can just background stream, add child, background stream. And that's basically it. So set the name so that our background manager can find you with the node path. And then we can actually set up the file to play, set it to loop. And now we got background music. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and actually create a manager for our sound effects. So in this case, we're just going to do the same thing. New script. Sound manager. Go ahead and create that. We got ourselves our sound manager. Let's go ahead and actually give it the class name sound manager. And that's basically it. From here, we actually need to create or actually have sounds in our file. So let me go ahead and add the sounds here. I'm just going to fast forward it. But in your case, feel free to search around for the perfect sound effects. Keep in mind, we need, I believe it was five sound effects, one for ball bouncing, two for winning or losing a point, and two other files for winning and losing the game round. There we go. As you can see here, we have a sound file for bounce, losing a point, losing a round, and then winning a point, winning a round. I'm going to keep everything again in one folder. Feel free to organize it however you want. Just make sure you add it properly to the preload for your resource files. In this case, it's going to be the same step as the background manager, just a few extra things we need to do. From there, it's going to be the same thing. We got to actually go to our noise. In this case, our file, you can see down here 0 0.09 seconds. So that's how long our wall bounce or bouncing file is. And then we actually need to preload it. And so to save you the trouble, I'm just going to completely fast forward through actually creating all of this. As you can see here, that's basically it. So we do need to do a few things as well. For example, have the ready virtual method. And then I'm going to create each individual animation. And again, before we do that, we actually need to create variables to hold the names of our files. And there we go. We got some names for bounce, win point, lose point, win round, lose round. And from there, we do the same thing we did last time. We just add the animations.
perfect. All that's left to do is actually go ahead and create those functions that we can call in our script to actually play the sounds. I'm going to fast forward it, but basically we're creating functions to actually play the sounds we would like to play. And that's basically it. Now we have a sound manager for our sound effects that will play the bouncing noise, winning, losing, winning round, or losing round. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and actually test that out right now. And we're gonna do the same process as we did with the manager. Lastly, all we need to do is the same exact thing as we did for the background stream, but this case for the sound stream. And that's basically it. However, we actually need to call these functions in the appropriate places in our game state. So let's go ahead and do that. So first and the most obvious will be the collisions. Whenever our player paddle collides with the ball, basically when the ball collides with either the top or bottom of the wall and the player pedals, we play the play bounce noise. And we can do that when we see the ball inversing itself. We can also play it here as well. And same thing in our point to rectangle collision. We can play that there as well. And so we should be able to hear the bounce noises when we collide with the paddle or top and bottom of the wall. Now, when it comes to left bound or right bound, we actually lose a point. And so in this case, we play lose point because game point player is false. Therefore, we lost a point. We can do the same thing for the right bound as well. So play win point. And that's basically it for playing losing or winning a point. Now, in the check for winner, if it is true, and in this case, when we check for winner and max score, is player score, then that means the player won. And so in this case, our manager will play round win or win round and vice versa. If sound manager, or in this case, if max score is equal to AI score, then sound manager must play lose round. We can save and that's basically it. Let's go ahead and actually test the music. And as a matter of fact, that's basically it. We just added music sound effects to our game. Now it's up to you what kind of music you want in your game or what kind of sound effects and if they mix and match properly. After multiple testing, I found out that you can't really hear when the player wins a round. And if we look at the music file, you can see at the bottom right, it's only 0.29 seconds. And there are pros and cons to using free open source and royalty free music and that you actually have to go out and search and nothing's going to be perfect. However, if you keep again iterating on your project, it will get better and better over time. Lastly, now that everything's complete, let's come back to the background length and notice here we actually hard coded. But now, now that we're finalizing everything, we can actually remove that in favor of using the built in get link that resource provides. So in this case, background file. And it will basically give us that 74. Right. So instead of hard coding 74, we can just get the length. And now we're not reliant on actually changing anything. And actually, we can do the same thing for background player. Now that everything's set up and we're towards the end, we can actually start removing more of the static coding or literal values. And in this case, instead of actually hard coding root no 2D background stream, we can replace this with get parent, which is a method followed by get path. And it's going to do the exact same thing. Get parent get path. But keep in mind that we need to make sure that the parent is actually loaded onto the scene tree. And so we need to use the on ready keyword. Once we do that, when we play, the music should still be there.
and there we go. Let's go ahead and actually do the same thing for our sound manager. Let's run the game and see if it works. So now we got something a little more manageable. We got rid of the literal values. We replaced it with something more dynamic. So basically as long as we attach our sound manager onto an audio string, we should be able to get the name no matter what it's called. Same thing for our length of the audio file. Basically what this means is that no matter what we swap in and out for our bounce sound. We don't really have to change anything else. Well, I'm so happy you made it this far in the series. It's not an easy task, so congratulations. You finished the sprint. Everything else from here on out will be of the relaxing nature. All I have left is a couple more episodes. The main one will be adding our code to itch.io. Don't forget that this code will be uploaded to GitHub, so please feel free to download that. Add it to your own GitHub repository. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for clicking the like button. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.